for this segment, uh, we're going to talk about big box and chain stores. Whether you love them or you hate them, they have come to dominate both the urban and suburban landscapes, driving countless locally owned businesses out of business. And uh, now we're seeing a backlash as certain localities opposed to the increasing samification of America are fighting back. Uh, in 2006, the city of San Francisco passed a ballot initiative requiring that chain stores looking to move into any of the city's small-scale commercial streets had to be approved by the city planning commission. And since then, 75% of the chain stores applying have been approved, but there have been notable exceptions. Uh, Starbucks and Chipotle both were rejected. And that 75% figure doesn't factor in the chains that didn't bother to apply because they knew they would be rejected. So. I'm gonna, we're going to talk about whether this is a good idea, whether this is a trend, what's happening. I'm going to start with you, Em. I'm going to ask you, chain stores, big box, box stores, thumbs up, thumbs down, what do you think? Uh, I mean, it, it's, I go to Starbucks. I really like my <laughs> the thing I get there every day. But um, I think the question really is that Walmart is the single largest employer, both internationally and in the U.S. So you can't just have a thumbs down, everybody loses their job kind of mentality. So I think they're important. I think what would make them better if their wages were a little more fair and people could actually make a living wage working at these places. So I think that's a more important discussion to have than whether they should not be there. And as well as, you know, how much are we willing to pay for cheap goods? Or right. I think that's all part of it. And the price is paid often by people who are yeah, like workers. Yeah, in and the factories overseas sure. and stuff. So, that so what, about, but what about the question, Daniele, about localities like San Francisco passing these ordinances and saying, we don't want you. Isn't that sort of an impingement on the, the free market and on the consumers in that locality who might want to go to Chipotle or eat at McDonald's and uh, shop at Walmart? Well, the free market argument is tricky because on one end there's something legitimate about it. On the other end, when you become what it's this far away from a monopoly and you control the whole market, that's in theory is free. In reality, you're denying freedom by your very existence. So it's an iffy, it's a dangerous line. Now, I think you know, what they are doing in San Francisco is so minute. They are not banning those stores. Mm -hmm. They are letting them exist in the city center. They are letting them do business even in a lot of the uh, smaller areas. They are just regulating it a little bit. That's not, I don't think that's so such a crazy radical step that we need to be horrified. I think that's legitimate to just have a minimum of regulation of how some of these businesses are handled. But how, I guess the question is, how do you decide what kind of control a locality in the citizenry there can have over who can come in and who can't? How do, you know, is right. it a ma simple majority? Do you have a, a planning commission like they do in San Francisco? Who's to say whether why the, you know, a certain maybe vocal minority should be telling me that I can't have a Starbucks in my neighborhood? What do you think, Paul? Well, again, that free market issue is very, very tricky. But the point is that this kind of thing is done all the time in many different ways. Uh, you know, if, you, if uh, Walmart absolutely, you know, decides to go into a territory and the community can't say we don't want it, well then you know what, every adult bookstore that's been ostracized and put out of business has the right to do the same thing. So clearly we're not free market in all these regards anyway. Um, I do think that the big problem, uh, the big issue here is that, you know, corporations are uh, licensed, we, they are given a charter uh, by the people, the people of this country, the people of the communities are the ones who issue the rights for corporations to exist. So I think the real answer to this is make corporations responsible for that right, for the privilege, for the legal right to be a corporation, make them adhere to the rules that they need to adhere to. Make them, make them toe the line or remove their, their, their corporate charters. So you're uh, I don't understand why like, we don't do that. Why right, don't so right that's now, that's not even in the discussion. Right now, they can, <laughs> but they can do whatever they want. Yeah, I mean, exactly. they essentially can do whatever they want exactly. within certain constraints. And you're saying but they are licensed the way we are licensed to drive a car. And if you drive drunk and you endanger citizens, you get that license taken away. Well, the same thing should apply to corporations. And if Walmart is playing by the rules and it is in a socially acceptable fashion, then they have the right to go wherever they want. But it's very easy to stop them on a moralistic and legal level by saying, you know what? We don't like the way you're conducting business. We don't believe that it's good for the people. We feel it's harmful to our community. It's a danger to the other businesses that are playing by the rules. And therefore, you're not allowed to open in our, in our region, or we're going to take your charter away. So I guess the question is, how do you, who gets to determine what right. the values that they have to uh, be promoting are and engaging in? 
That's the same question that he filters doesn't. all the way down. <laughs> that same question filters all the way down to these city councils that are saying we don't want a Starbucks. I mean, you know, there are parts of the parts of this country where you can't have a lighted sign. So McDonald's is in there with wooden carved signs yeah. and things like that. I mean, there's regulations all the time. There's different regulations in coastals, uh, coastal areas with various coastal commissions. There's environmental regulations. There's all sorts of impacts. Regulations, there's absolutely. All, all sorts of things. Well, what, like a, that. what about this? The, the larger picture of the sameification of America. Like wherever you go, you can go to a Fuddruckers and you can shop at Best Buy and you can you know it's every, you know, it everywhere you go collectivism this, it's that the Russian that the Soviets could only have dreamt of you go to any city in America there's the same stores the same manufactured products they get the exact same prices everywhere it is a willing uh, um, collectivism that but we've isn't, engaged isn't there in. something to be said for it I'll just play devil's advocate in the sense I'll ask you Emma uh, that wherever you go you know you can at least get a subway you know you can get a subway sandwich you know what you're going to get and you know how many calories are in it and you you know you an artist making it the for you art, an artist an artist uh, um, one of my <laughs> favorite um, <laughs> articles ever that came out from The Onion was one that was titled, Starbucks opens inside Starbucks bathroom. Right. <laughs> and I think that sort of sums it up too, that just, there's a lot of these guys everywhere, and well, you know, sometimes that's funny. And they don't play, they don't play uh, fairly. It's quite simple. They just don't they do play have fairly. An over they have the unfair advantage over the mom and pops. They have incredible political clout. And is it destructive to a community? Is it destructive to a society? Uh, you know, who else, who's to make that decision other than the community? So, Daniel, I'll close with you. Do you think this is a possible trend that this will grow from uh, places like San Francisco and other localities that have done this? I read an article. I may have sent it to you about uh, McDonald's in Australia, a small town in Australia. There's uh, the, the the citizens are trying to fight that McDonald's, and they voted not to have it. But then the larger territory or community, not the community, but the larger state said, no, no, McDonald's is going in. And now they're, they're I mean, it's, they're almost in despair about it because they really don't want it. So is this likely to, to grow because people are going to strike back against the big boxes and the chain stores? Or is it just liberal enclaves like San Francisco? Yeah, even because as long as it remains a small local phenomenon, if you are McDonald's or Walmart, you're like, whatever, you know, it's yeah. like three stores, no big deal. Mm -hmm. If you become something else, then you do put the money you have into being this humongous, gigantic corporation into lobbying to make sure that that does not become yeah, a big if deal. Paul, if what Paul is suggesting ever were even approaching happening, they would bring out the big guns and they would fight it tooth and nail and it would be ugly.